Hi, this is Daryl Webster for the Modern Workplace Scenarios. Uh, now, you might have seen my video on how to um, show your availability within Microsoft Teams and using other Microsoft 365 tools. I want to get into the why. Why should we show people our availability? We've gone through an extended period of working from home. Some of us have been doing this for years before and, or on and off. Others of us have been thrust into this experience and, uh, and we've had to work from home. Um, and one of the challenges we've had is trying to let people know when we're available. Uh, on one end of the scale, we might feel quite isolated. We don't reach out to people because we don't want to interrupt them. And on the other end of the scale, we're just ignoring whatever that status says. And if it's busy, we're just interrupting because we need to get work done. Now, what happens when we get interrupted? We, uh, we have to tr change context. We um, have to get into whatever that conversation is, understand what people are saying, and then somehow get back to what we were doing. And this is the thing. We are being interrupted, not just by our colleagues who um, you know, we are you know, working with and we need to, to get work done, but also other interruptions, social media, advertisements, things that we are trying to read and do in research where there's everything popping up on the screen. So with all of these things, how do we, how do we focus our availability and try and get back into focused work? Well, there's a few things that we can do within our tools, and you've seen this in the video. Let's get into the why. First off, why is it important to try and, and, uh, and signal availability? Depending on your role, you might need to be available to, to connect with other people within your team. Uh, if you're in a service role, if you're in a role where you need to connect with people and understand, like me, how people work and, and help problem solve, then you do need to be available. If you need to be in a leadership position, then you have to be um, have your, your door virtually open to be able to uh, approach and to, to ask for direction or, or to see um, you as, as a leader. But we need to manage that availability, uh, particularly when we are working remotely. And uh, this is something that we have to use our modern workplace tools effectively to, to show this. One of the first topics that I cover is about defining your availability. Depending on your role or uh, depending on how you work, it really helps to tell people when you're available, uh, what kind of working style you use, when you like to have your meetings. Uh, if you're a parent and you have to get away from work early so that you can, uh, can pick up kids from school. Um, so these sorts of things are important as a baseline to let people know when you're available. At the moment within Microsoft 365, um, there isn't really too many tools that easily make this available and published. Um, we don't really have a blog. We, we could put some of these details into maybe a Delve profile and, and tell people uh, when we're available. But I'd really like to see a page which we could, we could publish. It's going to be on our, our profile card uh, or a way to get to that on our profile card and tell people when we're available. So define your availability. And at the very least, let your team members know around you about the way that you like to work. The second thing that you should cover is, is planning your availability. This is a daily thing. Now, in, in my video, we, we covered this where, um, first of all, we were thinking about the tasks that we had to complete. Uh, it really helps to block out time in your calendar so that you can get focused time and, uh, and get those tasks done. It doesn't mean that you have to stress over how long or whether you're estimating the time that's right. The key thing is that you're giving yourself a block of time. And uh, by putting it in your calendar, it achieves a few things. One, it lets people know that when they go to book um, some time with you, that um, they can see that block of time is unavailable. Depending on how you've shared your calendar, uh, and I like to, to share at least the, the subject in my details so that anyone in the company can see that, um, then they may be able to make a better decision about whether or not they should ask you and um, negotiate whether you'd like to give up that time. The other thing that um, having that time in your calendar achieves is that Microsoft Teams uh, looks into your calendar and can change your online status automatically. The more you can do this, the more you can block out time and change your status automatically, uh, the more likely you're able to stick to those uh, times when you're going to get tasks done and you'll be able to, uh, to signal to others when you're available. 
One other thing that I got into was a, a service called My Analytics and a, a focus plan. This is a great feature that um, is available to a number of different uh, Microsoft 365 uh, licenses. Uh, and it's called, uh, you, you find it within Outlook, it's called Insights. Within that is a focus plan where you can uh, choose to plan to have uh, two hour blocks of focus time. Now, I did talk about the concept of booking tasks into your calendar. Focus time goes one step further. It will automatically change your online status to focusing, and it is similar to the do not disturb status in Microsoft Teams. This turns off um, notifications, any pop-ups, any instant messages that you might get. Um, it, it diverts all your calls to, to voicemail, and, and you won't get any um, invitations to certain calls uh, while you're in this focusing uh, time. Good thing about focusing uh, the focus plan and booking focus time using My Analytics is you can set yourself a plan and it will happen automatically for you or grab two hours um, for you each day that you can focus on. And you can shift that around as we saw in the video. Now why is this important over and above blocking time out in our calendars? When we use focus time, again, it automatically sets our online status to a do not disturb. Again, it means that I can get focus time uninterrupted and get on with that task. And two hours is an optimal time where we can get ourselves into a zone, we can start to problem solve, we can start to come up with solutions, we can start to get the work done. And even if we don't finish it within two hours, we've got a good stretch where we've got some work done. The tip we gave in that video was is if you align your task um, over the top of your focus time, then one, you're giving yourself a reminder for what work you can do, and also you're blocking out that time and automatically changing your status. So plan your focus time. Plan the time that you are going to be available. The other side to this is plan to be available, not just plan to block out time. It's difficult when someone in your team uh, wants to get time with you and all they see is in your free busy these tiny little gaps, very few of them throughout the day. So plan to have time that is available. Uh, again in my video I mentioned that if you uh, choose to block out time in your calendar for tasks, sometimes those tasks are not really that intensive. They can be things that you don't have to think too much about, they're quite procedural. So you could change the availability in your calendar to show as free and just use the reminder in your calendar as a, as a, a time slot to say, I'm going to be available during this time and I'm going to work on this task. And that way it won't change your online status and you will be available. As I said earlier, sometimes our role means we do have to be available for some of our team members um, so that people can connect with us, so that there are options to hold meetings and to have collaborative time where we can connect and come up with ideas and, and help each other with the tasks that we have. The other thing that we can do once we've planned our availability is we can change our availability. So over and above these gaps that we've planned and these, these times that we're going to dedicate to tasks, we can use Microsoft Teams to change our online status. And it, I find it's best to use this as an ad hoc method that I'm depending mostly on what I've scheduled as automatic, but I also want to change that online status depending on something that happens within the moment. Let's say that I have uh, made myself free uh, using some blocked time. It's not going to be a, uh, a difficult task. It's quite procedural. Um, and uh, the need arises for me to, to put myself into busy so that I can dedicate some time uh, to a, uh, a team member that's come to, to ask me for some help. So I can change my online status. And that signals not only to, um, to people around me, but uh, also the people remotely to see that, um, that I'm not available at this time. When we're in a call, this happens automatically. This is one thing that we should look for uh, when we are uh, trying to contact our people. Um, if you look at their online status and you can see they're in a call or they're in a meeting, then it usually means that they are engaged in some kind of um, presentation. Maybe they have to listen, maybe they, have, they are presenting. Uh, and so these sorts of statuses mean that they're not available. 
The uh, other side to um, changing your availability manually, if you're going to take a break, uh, one of my favorites is be right back, or um, when I do want to signal that I'm away. And being able to do this ad hoc and say, this is my availability, or at the very extreme, sometimes I might need to suddenly go into do not disturb because I've got to get to some focus time on a, on a small task, and I'm getting overwhelmed by the all the instant messages, then, um, then I will change my status uh, manually. The last option that you can take when you are signaling your availability and telling people if you are available to, to connect with uh, is within Microsoft Teams, leaving a status note or uh, a status message. This goes one step further than just changing your availability and saying, I am busy. It is a, a message that will pop up and it allows people to see what you might be working on or uh, whatever you put in there as a message. Now sometimes I like to uh, put in there if I'm dedicating a whole day to something that I might say I am um, off-site at and I'm working for this customer. Um, and within that status message I can also use an at mention and, and uh, mention a team member so that they might be um, able to cover for me. So this status message gives you additional, um, an additional way to communicate whether you're available. Um, and it's, it's displayed in such a way that when people do go to message you, they will see that message. And that's, that's an option to take care of. So with all these different options and with the, the video that we saw about how to put this in place, um, hopefully you'll see that there are many different options to show people when you're available and um, you know, be able to, to, to get focus work done, but also be open to collaborating. Um, you may have seen another video I did on um, my availability curve where I like to try and plan to be available at the beginning of the day, um, get into a collaborative mode with, uh, with people and projects, and then get into some focus time in the middle of the day, whether it be uh, deep workshops and meetings or, or solid tasks for a while. Coming out of that day, I can become a bit more collaborative and maybe check up with team members about how things are going and then um, also be fully available at the end of the day for maybe a bit of fun, a bit of winding down and some less, uh, less intense tasks. So giving these sort of things some thought, hopefully you can see that the purpose for telling people when you're available um, and you know depending on your role and giving that sort of thought uh, let's hope that you can use your modern workplace tools and, and to do so and um, and get on with work thanks for watching